Welcome back to another video with me, David Windsor. As always, you can go over to davidwindsor.com to get your free downloadable templates. All I ask in exchange is that you like, subscribe, and share this YouTube video with one of your friends today. For those of you that don't know, I'm a general contractor here in Park City, Utah, where we've been in business for 18 months. And in those short 18 months, we've accumulated $15 million worth of work. And this is our business, the Mark Windsor Company. We got all the logo, the logos, the apparel. Um, we're repping and my goal with this YouTube channel is just to share and document the processes and things and tools and tricks and tips that we're doing within our business. And hopefully my goal with that is that one of these things I'm doing in these videos can help you along the way in your construction journey. And I hope that's true for you. So that being said, something I want to talk to you about today is construction accounting. Construction accounting is extremely difficult compared to regular accounting. The reason is, is in a lot of regular accounting, you know, you got your sales and the sales is a category of one to four to 10 things. Construction categories is one to 10 to 20 to 30 things. As far as your cost of goods sold in regular accounting, you have, you know, one to two, three, four, five products, um, services, all that types of things. In construction, you have hundreds and hundreds of cost of goods sold. I mean, you have line categories for every single thing you do inside of a house and anything from a door hinge to concrete to rebar are all things that are categorized with inside your cost codes. And so construction accounting compared to regular accounting is extremely expensive. Um, it's extremely, extremely complex. And for that reason, if you're not good at numbers, if you're not good at counting, if you own your own construction company and you're struggling with construction accounting, I would really, really highly recommend that you get an accountant. If you're not a numbers person and this is pulling away from your time in the business, there's no reason that you should be doing this on your free time or at night. Yes, you need to know your numbers. Absolutely, you need to know your business numbers. But if you are struggling to, to keep up with that or you're falling behind or the bills and, and receipts and everything are piling up, that's where you have to recognize that this is a deficiency of yours. And that's a, that's just a cost, an overhead expense that you have to pay for to have an account. And there's a lot of places you can go for to get accountants. You can go to QuickBook. You can just Google simple CPAs, um, construction bookkeeper all those types of things. There's a lot of people within your area or remote that can log into your QuickBooks account or all those types of things and they can help you out with that. But if you're not good at it, rule number one that I would suggest, don't do it. Make sure you understand your numbers, but don't get so buried in that this, because most people hate the numbers, they hate the accounting. And because of it, it's the last thing they do. And if you're running a construction company, this should be the first thing you do. And so that would be my suggestion to you on that. Um, secondly, I would make sure that you have a system that you use, whether it's QuickBooks, Excel, whatever it is, make sure that you have a system and you stick with it. And that system is consistent with everything you're doing with inside your business. So today I want to show you a little bit of what we use, um, our Excel spreadsheets. I'm not going to show you our QuickBooks because then you have access to all the numbers and things that we're doing. So I'm just going to share with you a simple cost code pay application spreadsheet that we use within our business. And hopefully, you know, you can use that. So these are all made up numbers, so don't take these for face value for what they are. But um, you know, this is what this is our actual pay application and what we use in our business. So once again, you can go to davidwindsor.com to get free downloadable templates, um, things that we're using in our business that we were able to scale our business from zero to fifteen million dollars in just eighteen months. So. Um, at a later date, you can go over to davidwindsor.com and get things like this. You can download this type of stuff and there'll be um, there'll be links and stuff to that. But this particular spreadsheet is not on those downloadable spreadsheets because why? It takes a lot of work and I'm not giving that away for free. So that being said, a lot of people set up their jobs differently, their cost codes differently. A lot of contractors I've seen, they set it up per the order of operation, i.e., you know, you're, you're digging a hole, then you're pouring concrete, then you're framing, then you're putting in your electrical, your plumbing, blah, 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 all the way through. That's how a lot of people set it up. We set ours up per the divisions of construction. That's a, a that's a commercial thing that we do. And so you got divisions one through 16, division one being your GCs, division two, the site work, division three, concrete, um, you know, five, you got steel, seven, you got waterproofing all the way through. And so I'm not showing you all of our cost codes here because why? Because uh, it's not uh, something I'm going to share right now. So what I am sharing with you is just division one, some of division two, all the above. So this is, so when we bid a job, our, our clients, they see the divisions, they see all the way through what they see is they see, you know, general one or division one, general labor, and what we hold for all these categories they see. So they see that all in their estimate. And this right here is what we use to track each draw. So we, we submit draws on the first and the 15th of every single month um, to our clients. And so that being said, let me just show you a simple 
thing through here. So for instance, let's just go with waterproofing. So in this particular category, the bid was $11,350. So if you go over here, you know, you can go over to where you see it and that particular draw I've highlighted in green. So on March 1st, we build 11,350. So that was the total to date. This has been billed 100% of the job and balance to finish is $0. There's is no more money in that particular category. And so when we send a bid or a, an invoice to an owner via QuickBooks, we also attach this pay application so they can see all this information and all these draws. So let's go to the next one. So the deck waterproofing. So this bid was $19,950. If you go over to this month, we build $1,500 for this particular draw. So in the $1,500 that we build that, we build 8% of that category. And the balance to finish on that is 18,450. This is a great way for us to track that. Then on top of it, we have a second tab over here, where if you go onto this category, you know, each, each month, we, you know, each draw period, you can go here and see March 1st, February 15th, February 1st. Once again, we bill on the 1st and the 15th of every month. So you you can go over to March 1st. So if ever we're looking to see when someone got paid, if someone got paid, how much they got paid, we can go to that particular draw. So we would go here, we look at the whole spreadsheet and say, okay, deck waterproofing, man, we, all right, we billed $1,500 on March 1st. So we go over here, we go to, we find March 1st, here's waterproofing. So here's the category for waterproofing. And we can see the waterproofing company LLC got billed this amount of money on that particular date or um, not build, they got paid. We drew for that amount of money. So, you know, this is a category we drew for the project superintendent. So that was the monthly superintendent fee that we drew for. And then um, the management fee, all these types of things, meals and entertainment. So all those are the types of things that we do within our company as a cross-reference. We use that as a checkpoint. Uh, we don't we, we, you know, we use QuickBooks, as I mentioned, but we use this as a cross point and a reference to make sure that we're, our numbers are lining up and that we are making sure that everything is accounted for twice because it's extremely complex. There's a lot of things going on. And what makes construction accounting so difficult as well is there's a lot of money moving in and out of your bank account. So I may get $300,000 check from my client. I may say, hey, I'm drawing for $300,000 and they give me a $300,000 check. We deposit that into our bank account, but then we send a check out for $100,000 to the concrete company, $50,000 to the excavator, $50,000 to the electrician, and $200,000 to uh, you know, or $100,000 to the lumber company. So a lot of those things are extremely difficult, but on top of it, you're swiping your credit card over and over. You go to Home Depot, you got $9 for a box of nails. You got $300 for some paint. You got $2,000 for some material and flooring and all this stuff. And so there's a lot of things coming in and out of your bank account, credit card charges, um, receipts, all these things that you have to keep track of. And in, in one particular draw, um, I mean, per all the houses that we're building right now, we have six houses going right now. In one particular draw, we're going to have between the, the team, we have 80 plus receipts every 15 days. I'm talking receipts for, you know, Burger King that we went and bought the guy's lunch all the way to Home Depot. We had to buy a particular tool that we had to use on the job all the way to a hundred thousand dollar lumber order and a $50,000 steel order. So all that thing is, all that is going out to the client. It's coming back into my bank account, but then I am writing those checks. So it's really hard because Everybody, you know, if, if, if an accountant would see that we received $300,000 in our bank account, that technically speaking in accounting terms would be counted as income, but that's not our money because that $300,000 went in and about three, four, five days later, it went out. And so it's just a constant revolving door of money coming in and out of your bank account as contractors. And so it's extremely difficult. So back to rule one, if I was you and you don't like accounting, you don't, you're not good at accounting and you don't want to do accounting. Hire an account. That's an expense that you need to make sure of. I mean, if you don't have your books right, you're not going to have your business right. Straight, plain, and simple. So make sure you get your numbers right, number one. Because if you don't, then you're in big, big, big trouble. That's the biggest way for your business to go under is not understanding your numbers. So know your numbers is the biggest thing I can give you and take away from this video. And if you don't know your numbers, hire someone that's a cost expense that you're going to have to pay. That's just the cost of being in business as a general contractor. You're going to have to have someone help you with your numbers. And um, that's as simple as I can say it because I'm not good at numbers. We go through these, you know, we cross reference. We make sure that we're checking this. The whole team's checking this, but on top of it, we have an accountant helping us with this because it's very complex and make sure that if your, if your skill set is best served in the field or on the phone, making sales calls 
or you're really good at reading the plans and then catching mistakes or the finishes, whatever your skill set is, make sure you're applying your skill set to those particular things in your business. And you can outsource the rest and make sure that you set aside enough money and you bid enough and you have a high enough margin in your in your estimates that account for those types of things, because that's a cost of running your business. And you need to make sure that you know what it costs to run your business. So construction accounting can be extremely complex and make sure that you sit down and take the time to do it. And as I said, if you go over to davidwindsor.com, you can get some downloadable templates for free and things like this, like I just showed you are um, pay applications and stuff. Those will be coming to you at a later date um, at davidwindsor.com, but they won't be free because it takes a lot of time and effort. And these are the things that we're using in our business to run a $15 million company, which we, uh, um, we accumulated that amount in just 18 months. And my my goal with this YouTube channel is just to share with you the things that we did to get there. And hopefully it can help you along the way in your construction journey. So once again, thank you so much for watching. Um, I, I, I really appreciate you guys watching these videos. It means a lot to me and there's not a lot of you watching them. And so if you stay to the end of these videos, I, I can't thank you enough. It means the world to me that I actually um, hopefully am providing some sort of knowledge to people that they actually care to watch. And um, so it means a lot that you're out there just just supporting by press and play and watching all the way through. So hopefully this helps. And um, I guess I'll see you next time. Don't forget to go to davidwindsor.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with your friends. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye.